Yeah, very funny. Lieutenant Doctor's two days pay. Get out of here. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the funniest and most memorable action comedy movies ever. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Number 30, Shazam. The popular character of Shazam has been around since the 1940s, first appearing in comic book form, and was long overdue for a more modern feature film. What happened to me? Why am I... What, what, what did you do to me? What did you do to my voice? You have been transformed to your full potential, Billy Batson. The 2019 film recounts the iconic story of Billy Batson, a 14-year-old boy who can transform into the adult superhero Shazam simply by saying, Shazam! Throughout the film, he learns how to use his powers and enlists family members to battle evil alongside him, and we see equal amounts of epic and heartwarming moments along the way. This film has spawned one direct sequel so far, and we are excited to see where Shazam's powers could take him next. But we can only hope it'll be as action-packed, quotable, and hilarious as the first installment. Number 29, Johnny English. There are few actors who can do physical comedy as well as Rowan Atkinson, and we see him in one of his best roles to date in this 2003 flick. I remember every agent would carry a pen that looked just like this, completely innocent to the untrained eye, but click it twice. In the first film in the Johnny English trilogy, English finds himself as the lone agent tasked with saving the British crown jewels. Accompanied by his sidekick Boff, some incredible luck, and just a touch of skill, he's able to save the day, while keeping us in stitches the entire time. My bottom will be King of England before you are. Wrong again? Perhaps you'd care to look behind you. It's kind of like Mr. Bean meets James Bond, which is, of course, a perfect role for the star to nail with absolutely hilarious results. Number 28, The Man from Uncle. Based on the popular 1960s television series, the film takes place during that same time period, with some seriously charming star power and a high-stakes plot leading the charge. It will be located in a computer disk, and whoever has that disk will simply be the most powerful nation in the world. Henry Cavill plays Napoleon Solo, the American partner of Russian Ilya Kuryakin, polar opposite spy teammates whose characters hail from the original show. In the film, Solo and Kuryakin are unwillingly paired up to stop a criminal organization from obtaining nuclear weapons during the Cold War. Throughout the film, the main characters learn to work together, and at the end, decide to continue doing so under the codename Uncle. Oh, and you have a new codename. A codename? Yes, rather a good one. Uncle. The movie perfectly pays homage to the original series while leaving us hopeful for further adaptations to come. Number 27, Kindergarten Cop. How could we complete an action comedy list without featuring an offering from iconic action superstar Arnold Schwarzenegger? Ha ha ha. Quiet. In one of Arnold's first forays into comedy, he plays Detective John Kimball, who poses as a substitute teacher in order to get close to one of the student's mothers, whom he needs to testify against nefarious dealer Cullen Crisp. He then surprises himself and the kids by finding his footing and enjoying his new role. And the film takes hilarious twists and turns while dealing with the dramatic criminal backstory as well. We're going to play a wonderful game called Who is my daddy and what does he do? It's a great balance between action and comedy, and a classic for parents, teachers, and kids alike. Number 26, Central Intelligence. There's no better modern comedy pairing than the juxtaposition of Kevin Hart and Dwayne Johnson working side by side. Hey, look at you, you lost like 200 pounds. See, you gained it back in muscle. Oh my God, you look great. Nah, no, yes. you look great. Their statures, humor, and acting chops complement one another perfectly. And who doesn't love a good high school origin story? Jumping off from their high school backstory, this duo's lives totally change in adulthood, with former high school loser Bob transforming into a CIA agent in need of Calvin's help. I need your super sweet accounting skills to help me figure out the last piece of this puzzle, which is a transaction number from the winning bid. That'll tell us where the deal is going down. They help each other face their long-held insecurities while Bob shows that he may be the true master of disguise. Along with the many entertaining, action-packed sequences comes a plethora of funny and touching moments. Number 25, Midnight Run. Charles Grodin and Robert De Niro are a golden comedic duo in this revered flick, and make it non-stop fun to watch. You don't look like an FBI agent to me. Yeah, but you don't look like a dope to me. De Niro plays bounty hunter Jack Walsh, while Grodin plays an embezzler known as the Duke. 
After Walsh captures the Duke, they are stuck together as they make their way across the United States and find themselves ensnared in loads of entertaining scenarios along the way. Stealing $15 million from Jimmy Serrano sounds foolish. I don't think I get caught. Now that's living in denial. As they dodge both the mob and the FBI, they form an unlikely bond when they realize they have more in common than they thought. This film even spawned various adaptations, leaving behind a truly impressive legacy. Number 24. Spy Following Bridesmaids in 2011, Melissa McCarthy and director Paul Feig were hot commodities. Oh god, he went into a building. Okay, well, well done, that's it. Time to call it a day now. In 2013, they took their talents into the action comedy genre, creating the solid, if somewhat predictable, The Heat. Well, then say that. The process was eventually refined, and in 2015, the team released the far better and more star studded spy. This can't be right! Oh my god. Most of the praise centered around Feig's writing and directing, not to mention the uproarious performances from McCarthy, Rose Byrne, and a surprisingly hilarious and scene stealing Jason Statham. I was the couple that raised me explode in a van. I watched the woman I love get tossed from a plane and hit by another plane mid-air. Spy was a huge hit, scoring $235 million at the box office and landing McCarthy her first Golden Globe nomination. Number 23. Kung Fu Hustle Stephen Chow's 2004 flick is a love letter to the martial arts and black comedy films that came before it. It tells the story of the Axe Gang, a group of vicious gangsters in Shanghai who wreak havoc in the slum named Pigsty Alley. Both the gang and the residents of the alley are skilled in different types of fighting, and battles ensue throughout the film that are both hilarious and riveting. It's incredibly engaging martial arts comedy style, paired with complex characters, a unique perspective on heroes and villains, and the backdrop of the back streets of Shanghai makes for a seriously fun film to watch. Number 22. The Blues Brothers Films inspired by SNL sketches have been hit or miss over the years, but this iconic movie was a huge hit. With Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi at the helm, it's a guaranteed good time. Are you the police? No, ma'am. We're musicians. The Blues Brothers tells the story of siblings Joliet and Elwood, who set out to save their orphanage by recruiting their old bandmates while fleeing from the law. There's hilarity to be sure, and the musical numbers are beyond entertaining and star-studded, but the action side is something that is not praised enough in this classic. The car chases are legendary, that final performance is unforgettable, and we think you should sit down and re-watch this Mission from God sometime soon. Number 21. The Naked Gun Franchise Who doesn't love Leslie Nielsen? He brings his signature deadpan humor to this satirical film series, which is a continuation of the Police Squad TV series, and we are heartbroken that we won't see him in any future sequels. Do any of you understand how a man can hurt inside? Frank, they're not here for you. Weird Al Yankovic is on the plane. He plays Detective Frank Drebin, an agent of chaos who finds himself at the center of plots that could destroy the world, but he somehow always manages to save the day. It's impossible not to laugh throughout these films, as there are references and parodies throughout that almost every audience member can recognize, while giving us some action sequences that are memorable to say the least. I got something big coming up on the outside, something really big. I could use someone like you in my gang. You got a dental plan? Full coverage. Number 20. Last Action Hero when it was released in 1993, Last Action Hero did not receive a kind response. Critics hated it and it bombed at the box office. He's okay. Minor wound. Both cops dead. But time has been quite kind to Last Action Hero, with many believing it was a little too postmodern for its time, especially with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Die Hard's John McTiernan at the helm. He's fantastic. This is his best performance ever. It, but that was you! You were in that movie! The movie is a hilarious spoof of action cliches, and it upends the genre in various unique and entertaining ways. Let's say this is a movie. How many times have you heard someone say, stay in a car, and the guy doesn't? What happens? He saves the day. Or gets killed. Good point, I'll stay in the car. 
It's especially hilarious seeing Schwarzenegger making fun of himself, his storied career, and the genre that made him famous. If you get to Los Angeles, call my office. We can get your shopping center openings up. I don't really like you, right? You brought me nothing but pain. Last Action Hero was ahead of its time, and it now sits proudly among the greatest action comedies. Number 19, Charlie's Angels. Good morning, Angels. Good morning, Charlie. No one was really clamoring for a Charlie's Angels movie, especially 20 years after the conclusion of the television series, but that didn't stop Sony from doing it, and we're glad they did. The movie contains a brilliant and simply unbeatable cast in Drew Barrymore, Cameron Diaz, and Lucy Liu, and it makes the right creative decision in ditching the series' dramatic elements in favor of more tongue-in-cheek comedy. <laughs> Do you like fast cars? I like fast everything. The three angels work exceptionally well together, and the supporting roles are all brilliantly cast. The movie doesn't slouch on the action sequences either. I'm sorry, could you hold on a second? Sure, you bet. I like him so much. <laughs> to the surprise of absolutely everyone, this movie reinvigorated the Charlie's Angels brand for a new generation. Number 18, True Lies. Can you press the button for the top floor, please? Thank you. Following Terminator 2, James Cameron wrote and directed True Lies, starring A-listers Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jamie Lee Curtis. The film follows the two actors playing a married couple, in which Helen discovers that Harry isn't a boring computer salesman as she thought, but actually a counter-terrorism officer. Have you ever killed anyone? Yeah, but they were all bad. At the time of release, this was the most expensive film ever made. And with Cameron at the helm, you better believe that we see all that money on the screen in its high-octane, adrenaline-fueled action scenes. The set pieces are enormous, the action is exciting, the laughs are hysterical, and the performances are all top-notch. You're fired. Number 17, The Other Guys. The Other Guys is the fourth collaboration between Will Ferrell and writer-director Adam McKay, following Anchorman, Talladega Nights, and Step Brothers. The city's dying for a hero. Is it? Yeah. What about nine million socially conscious and unified citizens all just stepping up and doing their part? By this point, their process was razor sharp and well-oiled, resulting in the hilarious and surprisingly clever The Other Guys. The chemistry between Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg is outstanding, and Farrell does well playing against type as the straight-laced and mild-mannered dweeb. Someone's been playing Grand Theft Auto. Oh! I did that! I did that! The movie is also rife with some great action set pieces, and a particular sequence involving Samuel L. Jackson and Dwayne Johnson has to be one of the funniest things we've ever seen in an action comedy. Aim for the bushes. The Other Guys isn't original by any means, but it's so well-made that no one really cares. Number 16, The Bad Boys Franchise. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? Teamed up with funny man Martin Lawrence, the Fresh Prince's Will Smith plays one of two wisecracking detectives who hunt down various criminals in this franchise. So I'm playing cop now. While the first two films received mixed reviews, they became highly popular thanks to multiple gut-busting scenes featuring hilarious banter between the partners. So what you wearing? Man, give me the phone! Give me the phone! They also had over-the-top, yet mesmerizing action sequences that only director Michael Bay could bring to the big screen, which added some welcome heart-stopping moments in between the goofy dialogue and characters. Bay didn't direct the third film, which came out 13 years after Bad Boys 2, directors Adel and Bilal, along with Smith, Lawrence, and crew, were able to successfully capture the fun and action of the previous flicks to surprisingly positive reviews. Daddy! <laughs> Joker, you a pop-up. -pop. <gasps> Number 15, Tropic Thunder. We can thank Ben Stiller for Tropic Thunder, as he wrote, produced, directed, and starred in the satirical comedy about a group of actors who are thrust into real danger. Let's go and make the greatest war movie ever! Yeah! 
Yeah. The movie features some amazing performances, including Tom Cruise's unrecognizable Les Grossman and Robert Downey Jr.'s Oscar-hungry actor Kirk Lazarus, a role that ironically earned him an Academy Award nomination, which is no small feat for a comedy film. While many of its jokes would not work today considering the climate in which we live, we can still appreciate the well-directed and exciting action scenes. The movie's jungle locations are also beautiful to look at, making Tropic Thunder both a visual and comedic treat. Are you going to let me go? No, we hold you for ransom. Much more money now. Number 14, Pineapple Express. You have the easiest job on earth. You do smoke weed all day. <laughs> That's true. You didn't think of that. Oh. <laughs> you wouldn't expect to see awesome action scenes in a stoner comedy, but in this flick, it is the norm. Uh -huh. So, it's Dale, let me in, let me in, let me in. I just saw some crazy shit, man, let me in, please, for the love of God, let me in. It's Dale, Dale, let me in, man, let me in. Dale? Yes, Dale, that's what I said, it's Dale, Dale, let me in. Oh, all right, man, come on up. Featuring Seth Rogen and James Franco in a Golden Globe-nominated role, Pineapple Express follows two stoners as they go on the run from a drug dealer who wishes to take them out. <laughs> you okay, man? Look, I'll get you another bong, all right? It's my cat's birthday. Franco's performance is hilarious and helped jumpstart his comedy career in film. The action is relentless, and we know we said this already, but it's much better than you think. There's also a sweet friendship and a good message underneath all the blood and smoke. Red, where'd you come from, man? Where'd he come from? He came back to save us. You saved us? Directed by David Gordon Green, but produced by Judd Apatow and Shauna Robertson, it's another film that's developed a cult following. And for good reason. Number 13, The Nice Guys. Mr. March, we're gonna play a game. I think you have the wrong house. Oh. Oh. It's called Shut Up Unless You're Me. Oh. Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling weren't exactly the hottest names in comedy, but you wouldn't know it watching The Nice Guys. Not to be confused with the other guys. Mary Jane, marijuana pot. Play streaks fit this smoke in it. Oh, yeah. I can't smell. What? I got hit in the head a while back. I lost my sense of smell. Written and directed by Shane Black of Kiss Kiss Bang Bang fame, The Nice Guys is a visually gorgeous and stimulating throwback to the drug-fueled cop movies of the 70s. Full of bright colors, ugly outfits, funny hairdos, and retro cars. You lose your gun, you take a header off the balcony, and now you're gonna tell me it's like a, a hallowed time on a detective ploy, right? It was very slippery up there, okay? I was, I was in the pool. It's a fast-paced, richly told story full of laughs and great character moments. And Gosling and Crow work extraordinarily well together. You're not a murderer. She just said she killed three people. I know, but I'm saying deep down. Hey, look, one's a mistake. By the time you get to three, don't paint her with that brush. Because it's easy to live in your world, right, where everyone sits. In an era of bombastic superhero movies aimed at families, The Nice Guys was a refreshing ode to the mature, adult-oriented action comedies of old. Number 12. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World After sticking to low-budget English films with Simon Pegg, director Edgar Wright broke into the mainstream, or at least tried to, with the $85 million Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. You don't remember me, do you? We met at the party the other day. Were you the Pac-Man guy? No, not even. That was some total ass. I was the other guy. Scott Pilgrim was adapted from Brian Lee O'Malley's graphic novel of the same name, and it has to be one of the most bona fide comic book movies ever made. We're fighting over Ramona? Didn't you get my email explaining the situation? I skimmed it. Mm -mm. You will pay for your insulin! It is proudly boisterous, and it often honors its roots with comic book-themed visuals and sound effects. Like all Wright films, Scott Pilgrim was critically acclaimed for its visuals, editing, and kooky humor. Unfortunately, it bombed at the box office, making just $48 million. What was her name? She was Nat when I knew her, but she stopped liking that name. Then she stopped liking me. Your hair's cute. I like it long. But it'd be cute or short, wouldn't it? What? What? Why are you wearing that hat? I thought we could go for a walk. Luckily, it has since become a bit of a cult classic especially within the comic book fandom. Number 11, The Austin Powers Franchise. 
Mike Myers is at his over-the-top best as both the hero and the villain, and even some other characters, in this modern classic film series that spoofs the 60s-era spy genre. I have one simple request, and that is to have sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their heads. Austin Powers is a British agent who also fancies himself a smooth-talking ladies' man, and is tasked with taking on Dr. Evil and thwarting his quest to take over the world. Although it's set in the 1990s, Powers is a broad Bond parody that gives the films an undeniably nostalgic aesthetic vibe. The physical comedy, catchphrases, and even the music are the shagadelic cherries on top of these modernized throwback flicks. Not only were they insanely popular when respectively released, but they are also to this day. Number 10. Kingsman The Secret Service Exit. Would you like a lift home? Who are you? Spy comedies are as old as time itself. Oh, no, no, That's not cheese. Oh, no. Max, be quiet. <laughs> Get Smart was enormously popular in the mid 60s thanks to the James Bond boom, and it received a film adaptation in 2008 starring Steve Carell and Anne Hathaway. But perhaps the greatest spy comedy of our time is 2014's Kingsman The Secret Service. Are we going to stand around here all day? Or are we going to fight? The movie was an enormous hit, grossing over $400 million at the worldwide box office thanks to its stylish visuals, unrelenting sense of fun, and the unbelievably packed cast. And this is our standard issue pistol. It's quite unique, as you'll see. It also fires a shotgun cartridge for use in messy, close-range situations. How do they feel? Yeah, good. The church massacre going viral also helped. Kingsman was just like a James Bond film, only far funnier and way more violent. R-rated spy comedies are a risky venture, especially at $90 million. But Kingsman proved there still is an audience for this type of movie. Number 9. 48 Hours Hey! My name's Reggie Hammond. While appearing as the breakout star of Saturday Night Live during one of its lowest periods, this movie helped launch Eddie Murphy's career in mainstream Hollywood. And it deserves a spot on this list for that, if nothing else. You know what I am? I'm your worst f***ing nightmare, man. Murphy and Nick Nolte play a criminal and a cop who join forces to nab a cop killer. You want dads? Get me out of here! The movie is regarded as the first entry in the buddy cop genre, and its influence is still being seen in the genre today. I'm serious. I'm not in no mood, and I'm just gonna f*** you up out here. This is gonna be embarrassing to you and the police force. Their performances are what make the movie great, with Murphy's Golden Globe-nominated role as convict Reggie Hammond being a true highlight. It is an undeniable, influential classic. But get this, man. We ain't brothers, we ain't partners, and we ain't friends. Now, if Gans gets away with my money, you're gonna be sorry you ever met me. I'm already sorry. Number 8. Deadpool Despite the superhero boom of the 2010s, Deadpool was a major risk for 20th Century Fox. It was a hard R, which alienated a large segment of the superhero fandom. This form looks good. Oh! Barely anyone knew who Deadpool was. And those who had heard of him were still reeling from his horrid portrayal in X-Men Origins Wolverine. Because as of now, you only have one course of action. Damn straight. Find Star Francis. Star horror films. But an aggressive marketing campaign and the always charismatic Ryan Reynolds ensured its success, creating what is arguably the finest and funniest superhero movie ever made. So you're gonna do a superhero landing. Wait for it! Woo! Superhero landing! Yeah, that's really hard on your knees. Totally impractical. They all do it. Reynolds' performance was widely acclaimed, as was the movie's subversive writing and profane humor. I prefer not to hit a woman, so please play. I mean, that's why I brought her? Oh no, finish your tweet. It ended up grossing an astounding $782 million making it the highest-grossing R-rated comedy at the time. Number 7. Big Trouble in Little China Wait a minute, pal. <laughs> this is the hot fuzz of cheesy kung fu movies, proudly embracing the genre while intelligently spoofing and subverting its tropes. This blending of humor and action delighted critics, many of whom praised the movie's writing, Kurt Russell's performance, and the direction of Hollywood legend John Carpenter. 
can go off and rule the universe from beyond the grave. Indeed! Or check into a psycho war, whichever comes first, huh? However, it also received its fair share of critiques and bombed at the box office, resulting in John Carpenter feeling discouraged with the major studio industry. <laughs> Luckily, the movie received a strong following through home video and repeated television airings, and it's now considered a cult classic. Three years later, Russell would star in the far more financially successful action comedy Tango and Cash. Number 6. Hot Fuzz Do I have any choice in this? New. No. The second film in Edgar Wright's acclaimed Three Flavors Cornetto trilogy, Hot Fuzz follows Simon Pegg and Nick Frost as cops who discover that their small town is not what it seems. I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about the others! What others? The others the NWA have murdered! Both a spoof and a loving homage to cheesy 80s action films, this flick features all the action cliches you love, including a developing bromance between the partners and ridiculously over-the-top explosions in gunfire scenes. Take it The fact that this all occurs in small-town England is just icing on the already hilarious cake, and proved that Wright was a director to watch out for. Yeah, the way we see it, it's all for the greater good. The greater good? Well, that's as may be, but the law's the law, and they'll have to go. Also, it's just laugh-out-loud funny. Number 5. Drunken Master Big Trouble in Little China owes its very existence to the 1978 masterpiece Drunken Master. <laughs> This martial arts comedy starring Jackie Chan was enormously popular at the Hong Kong box office, becoming the second highest grossing film of 1978. <laughs> it gave rise to the comedic kung fu genre of which Big Trouble in Little China is a part and it helped popularize the drunken fist fighting style. It also launched a film series containing a sorta sequel, sorta reboot, various spin-offs, a prequel, and a host of imitators that desperately tried to recapture its magic. <laughs> Unfortunately for them, there is no recapturing the magic of Jackie Chan. Number 4. The Jump Street Franchise A remake of the television drama of the same name, these movies, like the previously mentioned Hot Fuzz, serve as both a hilarious parody of and a tribute to terrible 80s culture. You look really old. Were you held back or something? No. You look super young. Were you held forward? The films follow Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill as detectives who infiltrate various institutions in order to bust criminals. The chemistry between the two actors is palpable, and their witty interplay is always great for a laugh. One particle of unitanium has a nuclear reaction with a flux capacitor. Carry the two, changing its atomic isotoner into a radioactive spider. Some fantastic action scenes and cameos only add to the fun, making these films a true blast to watch, even if you've never seen the original show. Didn't explode. That's weird. When it comes to the buddy cop film genre, these are really some of the best in recent years. Number 3. The Rush Hour Franchise Who knew the pairing of legendary martial artist Jackie Chan and comedian Chris Tucker would work so well? You never told me you spoke Chinese. I never told you I didn't. You assume I didn't. These buddy cop movies follow two perfectly opposite police officers as they thwart, what else, various criminals and get into mischief along the way. Good guy. You all. It ain't you all, it's y'all. The flicks are notable for their intricate action sequences, particularly those involving Jackie Chan, who never used a stunt double and had our jaws dropping because of it. <laughs> Tucker provides some welcome laughs, and the two make an entertaining, enjoyable duo that no one would have expected to work. Um, Man, what the hell are you doing? I just being polite. Well, next time be polite to my nuts. While the sequel's critical reviews weren't as positive as they were for the first flick, both were box office smashes, with Rush Hour 2 becoming one of 2001's highest grossing movies. By the time y'all show some respect around here. 
Number 2. The Lethal Weapon Franchise Diplomatic Community It's just been revoked. Bringing us ever closer to the quintessential action comedy is this film series, starring Mel Gibson and Danny Glover as mismatched LAPD detectives Martin Riggs and Roger Murtaugh. Guess what? What? I don't want to work with you. Hey, you don't. Ain't got no choice. Every action comedy fan knows these movies' influence on the genre, with the cops' witty banter and exciting action scenes ramping up the tension with each new entry. Hey, hey Riggs, what are you waiting for? Shoot the bastard! Shoot him! Shoot him! Ah! The performances are excellent, the dialogue is always on point, and the friendship the two cops share provides a welcome heart to all the laughs and carnage. While critics gave varied reviews for each subsequent installment, when it comes to the box office, the first three were runaway financial successes while the fourth was one of 1998's highest-grossing films. Why don't you save your strength? You're gonna need it. Who's the chin? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Beverly Hills Cop Franchise my name's Axel Foley. Clearly, the action comedy genre works for Eddie Murphy, as he has starred in numerous films in this series as Officer Axel Foley. <laughs> While 48 Hours got Murphy's name out there, these movies are what really shot him to superstardom, as his performance was unanimously praised by fans and critics alike. The first flick was even nominated for the Best Original Screenplay Academy Award, which is almost unheard of for comedic action films. It's your ass is skating on thin ice as it is. Hey, look, we're talking about a friend of mine here! With Murphy's star-making turn and its memorable, catchy theme song, the Beverly Hills Cop movies are considered some of the best of the genre. Guys, that's the last straw. That was the last straw. You guys are too nice. Not only were they insanely popular when respectively released, but they are also to this day, with a hotly anticipated fourth entry set to drop in summer 2024. Before I go, I just want you two to know something, all right? That the Super Cop story was working. Okay? It was working, and you guys just messed it up. Okay? Was your favorite Laugh Out Loud action film featured on this list? Let us know in the comments. Oh! Ugh, get it out. I gotta get that out! Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.